Hey Dividend Investors, today what we are going to be talking about is the importance of liquidity. This is essentially the volume of shares of how many shares are being traded that single day of that specific stock or ETF that you're looking at. So why is the liquidity or the volume so important? Well, number one is, of course, when you're buying and selling a company or a stock, you have to make sure that, of course, there's enough buyers wanting to buy your shares, but also that there is enough shares for you to even buy. So this actually comes two different ways. And what I mean by that is, if it's a super busy day, for example, a couple of weeks ago or maybe around a month ago, Sundial stock was going crazy. There was literally two plus billion, billion or was it trillion? I think it was billion, two plus billion shares being traded every single day. And there was literally 500 million shares right at the open. And that is an issue on its own part because sure it seems like the liquidity is there it seems like you're able to get in and out of shares because that's what you're really looking at the volume for am i going to be able to buy shares is there enough volume of people selling to be able to buy some but also is there enough volume for me to sell to get rid of the shares when i want to get rid of them so when it looks like that, when it's like 500 million shares being traded right at open, you would think, oh, well, it's going to be easy to buy. It's going to be easy to sell. But that's not always the case. That is generally why you would look at liquidity is to see, hey, there's more than 50,000 or more than 100,000 ETF shares being traded every single day of that single ETF. That should be pretty easy to get in and out of. Or let's say a TD where there's two plus million shares being traded a day, that should be easy to get in and out of. But when you're talking about 500 million right at open, literally the first second of being open, then that's another issue, which is now it's still going to start crashing servers or trading platforms. And what I mean by that is we've all seen it. When Sundial opened up that day and literally you, unless you had a big brokerage account, you were unable to get in and out. And you could even have a good brokerage account, like let's say a, a big one, like TD as an example. And generally speaking, the bigger your brokerage, the more money they have, which means that the more money that they can throw up to a, be able to get in and out of a company for you. Because you have to believe that they are working for you. So when that and when it comes down to that, I'll give you a really interesting example. My dad and myself were both trading Sundial that day where it went crazy. Meanwhile, I could get in and out without an issue before they paused and stopped the stock market for it. I could get in and out just normally, but my dad, it showed that he bought it but it didn't show up for two hours. So we didn't know if he actually bought it or not, but on my account, I was able to get in and out and easily and done, and it was all fine. So why? What does that happen? Well, it doesn't matter how much money you have in your account. My dad has more money than I do in my trading in the trading account. But you would think he would be able to get in and out easier and they would pursue him and say, well, you have more money, you you can trade better than Alan. Well, that's not always the case. It comes down to the, the servers. Will the servers allow you to get in and out because of such high volume? So it's kind of a double-edged sword. You don't want there to be such little volume that you can never sell, but you don't want there to be stupid volume where you just cannot do anything because on those days, we could go over to a TD stock or an RBC stock or an ETF and trade normally, but the Sundial stocks were, were really freezing everything. So that is just part of it. <coughs> so that is the importance of volume having enough volume so that you can get in and out easily without having to wait 
hours or days to get in and out of a stock or an ETF, but also to the point of not having to deal with circuit breakers that say, hey, the stock's gone up 150% in two seconds, we need to stop this from trading to kind of settle it down, and vice versa. Hey, it's down three, uh, 30 or 40 percent. We need to stop this thing so that people can start getting level-headed on this stock. So that is basically what volume does. I hope that this kind of made some sense. If it has, hit that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you guys again next time.